Hi, good morning. Uh, this is Amy from Good Food Unearthed. And when all of this started with um, the pandemic situation that we're dealing with right now, um, I had to search and find uh, resources that were not covering up the truth about what was going on. And so I wanted to share today some of those resources that um, I found to be useful. And this is nowhere near an extensive list. Um, but here we're going to show you uh, a couple of places where you can check on the news and updates. And, and um, I'll say that, you know, there are some sources where I don't agree with everything that each source puts out. And um, you shouldn't accept absolutely everything that anybody says, but I have found that they are pretty um, reliable, um, they're honest about where they're coming from, and they are very helpful at giving you facts where you can decide for yourself, come to your own conclusions. Um, as one of the resources I'll show you, uh, Ryan Christian of um, uh, the Last American Vagabond says, uh, question everything, come to your own conclusions. So one of them is Dr. Pamela Popper's channel on YouTube. And if you go on here, you can get um, a bunch of updates. She's been posting videos every Tuesday to Friday um, on information about COVID-19, on um, Make Americans Free Again, which will I'll show you what that is. Um, and how to build resilience, just really great uh, short videos that you can get updates from. Um, the next one I'll show you is The High Wire with Del Bigtree. And uh, Jeffrey Jackson is one of the reporters on here. You can check out the Jackson Report. And this is an excellent uh, resource um, to look into. Uh, the medical side as well, um, especially with regard to vaccines. So uh, Del Bigtree started the high wire um, after he himself discovered what was going on with vaccines and investigated them and, and found um, there were a lot of issues, especially um, with uh, the lack of transparency. And so he actually works with an organization called Informed Consent Action Network, and you can look them up. Um, it's ICAN, I-C-A-N, and you can see what lawsuits they're involved in um, to help combat uh, the issues of uh, conflicts of interest and um, non-disclosure in uh, the around vaccines with the regulators and the pharmaceutical companies. So another uh, great resource, and this is from an article I was reading today, is actually Off Guardian. Um, and Ian Davis has written a lot of great articles on here. Uh, this is the latest, and I'll just go to the homepage. And they've had a lot of great contributors, um, including Rosemary Frey, uh, so if you're in Canada, she's an excellent um, person to look up her work. Uh, she's an investigative journalist into medical issues, and she has a Master of Science in Molecular Biology. Um, so this is another great resource to look at um, what's going on in the news. Um, there's excellent. Actually, yeah, this is great that they mentioned this. So if we just had November 11th, and if you want to know um, what was really going on, um, and what's it actually contributes to what's going on now, uh, you really have to examine history and look at what we were not being told, try to put the pieces together. And James Corbett did an excellent um, documentary series called The World War I Conspiracy. Um, and I highly recommend looking at that three-part uh, documentary series to see um, what was actually at play to bring about World War I, what were the goals involved, and excellent uh, series. So we've got Off Guardian. Um, we also have Activist Post, which is, um, I believe, 
maybe the person who set it up is Spiro Skaras, and I would recommend looking him up. You can find him on BitChute, and he has articles on here. Um, there's the Ice Age Farmer who's written this article, and there's some articles on um, other different things such as economics and uh, technology, um, 5G issues, um, the police forces. Uh, it's really uh, a good resource and you get connected to other resources from them. So activistpost.com. Another one is Unlimited Hangout with Whitney Webb. And I have to say, um, I discovered Whitney Webb's work uh, through The Last American Vagabond, and she is an excellent uh, dot connector. Now, the sources that I'm sharing um, with you, they're very big about um, when you when you read something they've written, they they link to their source material so that you can go and have a look yourself, which I find is very important um, because they may come to conclusions that are different from the conclusions that you may derive from looking at the same source material. So I really appreciate that they outline, you know, how. Um, what they've put into their article, what are the sources that have gone into it. And Whitney Webb is incredible at um, sourcing things and, <laughs> and putting the dots together. Um, so there's investigative series. There's a couple of other uh, investigative journalists in here. Um, and they have the uh, Epstein series. You have uh, Dark Chase and Cyber Reason, the intelligent front company seeking to subjugate the world with artificial intelligence singularity. And, you know, just just take a minute. Um, and there's a podcast, too, on Rockfin. Uh, it's really well worth looking into. Um, so, you know, have a look and read through and you'll see that um, her articles are really well written and uh, sourced. So the next one we've got here is The Last American Vagabond. Uh, that's Ryan Christian. Um, and he has the web series that's from Whitney Webb. So she has a series on um, how the election was pre-planned and then also engineering contagion, how all roads lead to dark winter um, and Derek Bro's series, um, Bill Gates's web of dark money and influence which is uh, also really well done. He also cites his sources um, and does some really good investigating research. So Ryan Christian has put together this excellent website. He has um, the daily wrap up. It comes out um, basically every day um, with some news. Um, he also has uh, uh, foreign policy with um, Inkalesh is his last name. Yes, Robert Inlakesh. Um, and so this gives you like a broader picture, not just the COVID story, but what else is going on in the world. Um, and that's really interesting to see what else has been playing out while we're being distracted or told to look in certain directions. You can expand your um, horizons, take a step back and see what is what else is happening in the world, what else is going on. Uh, the Corbett Report, I found um, to be an excellent uh, source. This is um, op open source intelligence news. Again, he cites everything um, that he mentions. Uh, he's got articles, uh, videos, Propaganda Watch uh, are some great uh, videos that he puts up. Um, there's documentaries, as I mentioned, the World War I conspiracy documentaries and more. Um, he does great interviews with um, other useful resources. So there's quite a few resources that I discovered through him. And I happened to discover uh, the Corbett Report by chance when I was investigating the history of medicine, modern medicine, and how that started, um, and looking into uh, the Rockefeller influence into that. And he has an excellent documentary on Rockefeller medicine. And you can also see um, this is touched on in his two-part um, documentary series. There is How Big Oil Conquered the World, and then Why Big Oil Conquered the World. Um, 
So I, what I do is I, I do my own research outside of these sources, and then um, I may get some tips and things from them and do my own investigation. And it's after some time that I feel that I've found a valid source that's worth sharing. Um, so that's something uh, to consider. Um, you always check it out and validate it yourself. And then um, you can say whether, you know, this is giving you good information or not. So another um, source is 369 Media. Um, they're new. And I discovered them through um, uh, their notice of liability that they've written to every lieutenant governor um, in all of the Canadian provinces. Uh, they're still looking for some signatures. They're aiming for 20,000 signatures um, before the next step is taken. And I believe they have maybe around 13,000 or a bit more now, um, but please have a look. Um, I'll actually just show you show you this notice of liability because it's very well written. Um, and this is for ending the declarations of emergency in Canada because there is no justifiable um, evidence to support them. So you have your objective and what the notice is. They explain why they're doing a notice instead of a petition. So the notice is a mass action undertaken by a man or woman protecting his or her rights and enforcing the liability of those who are causing or facilitating harm. It's a powerful lawful remedy using fundamental laws and the rules of commerce to hold corporate entities, including corporate government, accountable as they inflict for-profit harm on men, women, and children. So by choosing the notice path, you're opting to stand inside of your constitutional power and exercise your rights through non-adversarial, informative, and empowered actions. And they explain why they're addressing the lieutenant governor and commissioner. Um, for more on this, I did an interview with Nicole and Carrie of 369 Media that you can see on my YouTube uh, and BitChute channels, as well as um, other social media, which I'll show you in a minute. So I'll just take you to one of these notices. This is for Newfoundland and Labrador, and it's addressed to uh, Honorable Judy May Foote. So they explain, they lay out clearly um, their evidence and the definition of what an emergency should be uh, that should be met and how all of the evidence shows that um, the emergency status was never met, never justified. So there are some questions that are asked and then they state at the end to please provide the requested written proofs of claim, C points one to seven in its entirety to all of the enclosed using the information provided. Failure to do so will be deemed to mean no such proof exists and that you and your capacity as Lieutenant Governor are not in possession of the evidence required to justify invoking and upholding the declaration of emergency related to COVID-19 and the novel coronavirus. Failure to produce the aforementioned information within 21 days from this notice confirms that as Lieutenant Governor Honorable, Honorable Judy May Foote you recognize that prolonged lockdown of our province will have devastating effects on our economy and the collective well being of our people. Failure to respond as requested further serves to confirm you will accept full commercial liability for any and all damages associated with these measures for which future notices of claim may follow. So I think that was really well done and you can go ahead and sign it. Um, there's other things as well that they have been taking action on and they've got a great podcast and you can also join their community um, if you're willing to, you know, you, you wanna be part of this community to start taking action. So it's about informing yourself and others um, connecting and acting, using your information and connections um, 
to build a strong self um, and community. So this is part of part of their um, goals. Now I'm going to show you a couple of my new. So you can find me on YouTube and on Instagram, Good Food Unearthed. Um, and now you can also find me on BitChute. So I put a few of my um, work interviews and webinars, free webinars up there. There's my interview at 369 with Dr. Pam Popper. And two of my free webinars, there's a third one coming soon. Uh, COVID-19 Investigating the Truth, part one, the science, and part two, what is really going on and what we can do. And they are over three hours. Um, so take some time to really uh, digest it, listen to it, go back and review, um, and share if you find it useful, share with others. So another uh, source is minds.com. And on here, you can find me as well at Good Food Unearthed. Um, for again, my webinars and interviews are posted up here, uh, as well as some of my um, blog articles and sharing from other sources. And then Parlor, um, which I have also just joined. So you can find me on here. And now let's go to some other sources. Uh, Collective Evolution, I found, has been doing some pretty good reporting on the COVID-19 story, especially with a lot of stuff that's being censored from the mainstream media, um, including uh, doctors and scientists who are speaking out around the world, um, the Corona Extra Parliamentary Committee that formed this summer in Germany and is taking or pursuing legal action uh, for the COVID-19 fraud and crimes against humanity. Um, so there's some pretty good articles in here that you're not going to see anywhere else. Uh, you've got the World Doctors Alliance. We do not have a medical pandemic. And you can see the video. And different things. So this, again, is um, one of the reportings on how um, the World Health Organization stated that 10% uh, of the global population um, appears to have been infected uh, from seroprevalence studies, which would basically mean that the infection fatality rate is right in line with the uh, seasonal flu. So, and they can, the World Health Organization itself confirmed that number. Um, so speaking of uh, Dr. Pamela Popper, you, this is her business wellness, wellness forum health and they focused on informed healthcare decision-making. Um, so one of the things they added is the forbidden videos, which they can't put up on YouTube because uh, it would get censored or their channel would get threatened. So there's um, still important information put up on the YouTube channel. But if you want to hear some of the things that she can't put up there, they have the forbidden videos. You can also subscribe to her newsletter, which comes out every Monday and get information that way as well. Um, she started Make Americans Free Again, and this is a great resource um, to see if you want to join this action or um, you just want to see what's going on. They have great resources they've collected for homeschooling. Um, you can look at the legal resources and they talk about current lawsuits and uh, different things like that. The Ohio landmark lawsuit that is challenging the emergency status with lawyer Tom Renz. And uh, you can find out how you can take action there. There's some good advice for talking to people, um, different things that you can adapt to where you are locally. Um, and the good news section I find is really nice to look at because they're also reporting on things that you're not going to hear about in the mainstream, um, good things that are happening around the world. Uh, Stand for Health Freedom is another site. Um, the Health Freedom Advocacy Center, which is another great resource and you can see how you can help. Um, you can also see what is 
going on in terms of legislation that's being passed um, that you can take action um, against that is really legislation that's eroding medical freedom and parental rights. And so this is a good resource to look into, standforhealthfreedom.com. Uh, Press for Truth is, um, was created by Dan Dix. And this is a Canadian um, man. And he was um, basically uh, hit hard with the censorship just as the last American Vagabond was. Um, you, his whole channel was removed off of YouTube, but he does really good reporting. And I really recommend looking at his, his work. He has articles, videos, interviews, documentaries, um, another great resource to look into. So let me just scroll down his page for a minute so you can have a look. Um, so he talks, you know, about the Ticketmaster, um, where they're basically going to have you prove that you've been vaccinated to enter in to a concert. Um, the uh, stricter lockdown, so we're seeing that, you know, Christmas isn't going to be a very happy holiday. Um, and they talk about how the Canadian military uh, is basically um, openly using propaganda against Canadians to influence their behavior um, and so on. And again, like if this, some of these things sound outlandish to you, I just recommend looking at the work and reading it for yourself and then deciding after you've read it, you know, and still to approach things as always, with open-minded skepticism, um, don't take, don't just swallow everything whole. Look at it, process it, compare it to other bits of information that you've come across, and also um, figure out, you know, what's of benefit to you. Um, how is this useful? Uh, is this opening me up to more truth? Am I closing down on this? Am I being too narrow focused? Um, and so on. So you use that process of your own discernment. Um, the next one I'm going to show you is Derek Bros, uh, investigative journalist, his website, The Conscious Resistance. And he as well has books, articles, um, documentaries, videos, podcasts. Um, another interesting thing are his freedom cells, which I recommend looking into. And, you know, he does some really great work that, again, he, um, he cites his sources. He is not um, overly worked up or jumping to conclusions. And, and that's, I think, an important thing to look at when we're sharing information is to try to approach things as objectively as we can um, so that we are open to seeing what the real picture is. And when we're jumping to conclusions, when we're grasping headlines that seem to fit our narrative, we lose that opportunity. And, and that can go for all of us, for all sides. So some uh, resources for legal um, information is the Justice Center for Constitutional Freedoms here in Canada. So that's jccf.ca. Um, and you can find some great uh, information about the COVID legal actions, um, some of the news around COVID-19, their articles on their um, legal help. You can uh, contact them about that. Um, they also wrote the uh, letters to the chief medical officers in every province regarding the lockdown, lockdown's adverse health impacts. And that's really important. Uh, in Newfoundland, they wrote to uh, chief medical officer of health, Janice Fitzgerald, and they have a reply from that office, which is important uh, to hold on to. So the next one is uh, Rocco Galati's Constitutional Rights Center. And you can get some good resources on here including some uh, videos that he did to inform people about the lockdowns 
um, the mask mandates, uh, the duties um, and rights of business owners. So what actually can business owners do? Um, what are their duties and um, what are their rights? And then also talking about informed consent and um, how emergency measures don't um, override certain human rights as stated in uh, the Emergency Act of Canada and the International Covenant on Political and Civil Rights. So that's great. And the Solari Report with Catherine Austin Fitz also has some great resources in there as well, um, including some interviews with um, John Rappaport, who I found to be a really great um, investigative journalist. Um, you can also find his work on nomorefakenews.com, which I sh will put up here soon. But we're going to have a look at this now. So let's see if we can get up some of his work that was recorded on the Solari Report. Um, Yes, this is an, a great one. Uh, he interviewed Tom Renz, the lawyer in the Ohio lawsuit. And you can get a good feel for um, their approach and what they're doing and why they're approaching it that way. Uh, really great interview. And then of course he talks about the virus and the injection fraud. Um, so this is uh, a sane person's guidebook to the global pandemic and creation of a false epidemic. So there are six parts to that series, all well worth looking into. So if you really dig into the history of what's going on, um, another great resource uh, is David Crow, um, another Canadian and investigator um, into infectious diseases, and you can go to infectiousmyth.com to look up his work and again decide for yourself, but you know you can have a look at it. And he looked into Ebola and West Nile and Zika, um, SARS, uh, H1N1, AIDS, and so on. Um, to really look and see what was the science that was actually there and not just what we were being told. Um, so infectiousmyth.com is another good one. Uh, Dr. Peter Bregan, who's provided some uh, supporting documents in the Ohio lawsuit, has a coronavirus resource center, and he's written some articles on this. and. One of the important things I think that he's exposed is the public health strategy of um, purposefully inducing fear uh, to, um, to get the, uh, I'd say to control behavior to, uh, it's a behavioral control tactic um, that is well known. And so that is, the reason why we're getting this, um, why the media is reporting cases the way that they are, even though cases don't mean that a person is sick or infectious um, or in hospital, uh, why they were misreporting on the death counts, um, which goes against medical ethics. And that's an interesting thing to look into. So. One other one I'll suggest is Dr. Tom Cowan, and you can have a look at um, his YouTube channel, and he's put up some really great um, short videos um, on the PCR test, on the Moderna uh, vaccine, um, and masks, and so on. And again, this is definitely not an extensive um, resource. <laughs> Uh, or extensive list of resources because um, I ended up discovering so many through finding all of these other people and then connecting and reaching out. So if your intent is to find out what's really going on, you're going to find out what's really going on. If your intent is to find information that confirms what you believe, then you're going to find information that confirms what you believe. Um, 
it's your choice what you want to look at. Uh, if you want to know what's true, it can challenge your um, assumptions, especially those that are held subconsciously. And that may not be very comfortable because you may have made decisions in your life that um, when you get this new piece of information could make what you did seem you know, not so great, but you shouldn't dismiss that information just because uh, there's a push within yourself to turn away from it. Um, there's some pretty outlandish things that I've looked at, and um, I always think to myself that, you know, there's no harm in looking. There's no harm in reading through and I trust my own discernment. I trust to take whatever information that I find. Um, and my focus is on knowledge that's empowering. Um, so it becomes actionable knowledge. Does this open me up to discovering what's really going on? Or does this bring me down and hold me in fear and make me convicted and um, make me uh, not open to new information. Um, I just want to end by saying that throughout human history, as far as we know, right, science has always progressed from the challenging of paradigms and dogma. We as human beings only evolve and grow when we do keep our minds open, when we remember that there is more out there than what we can perceive in this very moment right now. And that's a good thing. Um, that gives us respect for one another, for the changes that happen in the world, and it protects us from um, adopting dogma, from acting out of conviction where we feel that the harms that we commit are justified. Now, what I advocate for is questioning all sides of an issue because there are always more than one or two sides. And the truth is always multifaceted. And when we do that, we can give that space for informed consent. Our choices should be left up to each one of us. There's very good reason for that. Now, if you don't believe so, then I would ask you to investigate why you don't believe so and apply that to your life in every single aspect of it. If you hold that belief, then what you're saying is that I or somebody else has the right to override your decisions. Is that something that is true? Just think about it. So I'm going to end here and I hope that these resources um, are helpful. And I'm sure you'll find some of your own um, because that's what makes us awesome is that we are diverse. We are unique amalgamations. Um, and what we can do best is to share. We share through conversation. We share through opening, openly listening to one another to being receptive and by being ourselves 
and finding our own um, our own way. So you may not adopt these resources, and that's perfectly fine. You may find some issues with some of them. That's perfectly fine. And I totally respect um, whatever it is you choose to do. Um, and I just ask that you respect what I have chosen to do. So have a wonderful day. And if this is helpful, feel free to share it, pass it on. Take care.